Today I'm going to vacuum cast some really tiny parts and then assemble them to make a completed figure. Should be fun, so stick around. I've had these figurine parts for so long, I can't remember where I got them or who made them or anything about them. Uh, if you guys know anything, let me know so I can give credit to the manufacturer. But they're a great collection of body parts and they all more or less fit together so you can assemble them into figures of various poses. The details in these figures are really fantastic. And also there's all kinds of fun stuff going on like this dude sporting a mohawk. The first step is to pick which body parts I'm gonna to use to make the pose. And I suppose I could do some surgery and uh, uh, make these a little more PC. But instead, I think I'm gonna leave him in his natural Greek Olympic athlete form. And I'll be using little bits of this wolf sticky wax to tack the parts together while I figure that out. I have to say that I had fun with this and I played around with the pieces for quite a while before I found a pose I liked. The first step in making the mold is to cut a little strip of wood that will serve to both hold the parts and be a tray to pour the resin into when I cast them. Because the parts are so small, I'm gonna vacuum cast these pieces. That means I'm gonna set them up a little bit different than I normally would with a funnel and a sprue and a vent. It's really hard to do that on little tiny parts and we should be able to make a much simpler arrangement of the parts in the mold and let the vacuum pump do the work, making sure that the mold cavities all fill properly. Here I'm coating the piece of wood with beeswax so the molding rubber won't stick to it. My old friend's sticky wax is the best way to attach the parts to the tray, and I had to support the arms on little wooden sprues to hold them upright so that they could pour and fill properly. While over at the table saw, I also cut out some small pieces of MDF. That's medium density fiberboard, and it's covered in plastic laminate, which makes it perfect for mold cases. I coated the MDF in beeswax, and here I'm making a gasket out of the same rubber I'm going to pour the mold with. This is the simplest way I have ever found to make sure the mold case doesn't leak. The plexiglass front panel is strictly for the video, People comment all the time they love watching the molds get filled. And the best thing about building a small box like this out of thick wood is that it holds together with just a few clamps. I mixed up 100 grams of rubber and popped it into the vacuum chamber, which does a very nice job of sucking out all the air. And when that's done, you close off the chamber, Turn off the pump, and open the chamber, and let the air back in. And then we can pour the mold. I made a mistake pouring this mold, as you can see, and I draped the parts a little more than I'd like. But when you do that, you run the risk of possibly trapping air against the parts, so we'll have to see if I got lucky and didn't cause myself some problems. Okay, it's day number two, and this mold is cured and ready to go. Let's pull this box apart and see what we got. I like to trim my molds up neat and tidy. The flash doesn't really hurt anything, but it's in the way, and it doesn't look good, so I always give my molds a nice little trim. I could have arranged these parts in a circular array in a cup, but by putting them in a straight line like this, it made them really easy and simple to cut. And that's the way uh, 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 I like it. Uh, uh, uh. I'm cutting these half rounds so that the rubber bands will have evenly distributed pulling force on the molds. This trick of turning a square mold into a round mold is surprisingly effective at getting perfect, invisible parting lines. I don't like rough surfaces or sharp edges around rubber bands. Also, Sanding just makes the pieces more pleasant to handle. The resin is mixing and the mold is assembled and it's down in the vacuum chamber. Let's see if we can pull some bubbles out of these cavities. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, look at that. Look at those bubbles come popping out of there. Now that's definitely the air that's trapped down in those cavities. That's not the resin foaming, that is definitely air coming out of those cavities. Uh, especially the ones closest to us. Those are the arms and fingers, and they're gonna be the hardest ones to get the resin down into. 
Now you can see the resin is beginning to foam, so that tells me we're about done and I need to turn the vacuum chamber off. I'm topping off the mold at the pressure pot to make sure I have enough resin in the well so that I don't starve any one of the cavities. All right, it's time to check the witness cup. Seems like it's ready to go. Let's pull it out. Feels pretty hard, but with really tiny parts like this, they tend to take a longer time to cure than bigger parts. The larger the part, the quicker it cures, generally speaking. So we're gonna be careful extracting these. Remember too, they're all attached to that single bar, this bar right here. So they all have to come out all mass. They can't come out one at a time. So, what do you think we got? Think we won? <laughs> think we got it? Or do you think we completely bombed it? The thing I'm worried about the most are the fingers. There's teeny, teeny, tiny little fingers. And we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Come on. Come on out. Now the feet are wanting to stay. Oh, look at that. What do we get? What do we get? Oh, my God. I mean, they are... Perfect, just the way I like to see them. <laughs> They're absolutely perfect. All right, check them out. Look at the detail in that. Look at that. Look at that. Detail. No bubbles. No bubbles. No parting lines that I can see at all. Look at look at those fingers. Look at those fingers. Every finger, perfect. No bubbles. Yeah, yeah, just absolutely flawless. I mean, it just reproduced every little flaw in the original. Look at that. all the toes, all the fingers, everything's perfect. And you might ask yourselves, well, if vacuum casting worked this perfectly, why not use it every time? And the answer is twofold. One is a lot of times you simply don't need it. If you sprue and vent a mold cavity properly, it's going to fill, it's not going to have any problems, and you don't need vacuum. And the other reason is that sometimes it doesn't work. These parts, if you notice, are pretty straight hanging down. I mean, the arm is bent here the most, but in the main, they're pretty straight, which means as the bubbles expand under vacuum, they're gonna to wanna to go out the top. There's really no places for, the, for an expanded bubble to get caught. But I have seen in vacuum castings many times where a bubble will expand inside the mold under vacuum. Then when you release the vacuum, it contracts back down and you still have the bubble still in place because it was trapped up under the roof of the cavity. So vacuum casting is not a one size fits all solution. But in this case, it was really, really good. <laughs> I'm gonna cut this thing apart and put him together and see what he looks like. All right, so here's our boy all assembled and puttied up. Even though the parts fit together reasonably well, you still have to use epoxy putty or some other filler to smooth over the joints. And I'll wait until the putty is dry to give it its final sanding. Uh, for historical accuracy, I've decided to name him Leonides of Rhodes, who was a famous athlete <laughs> in ancient Greece who won like 12 Olympiads. He was a runner. Um, interesting side note, married women were not allowed to attend the Olympic Games, uh, but single women could, and uh, so I find that fascinating. Of course, uh, somewhere out there is a Greek scholar who's going to contradict me and tell me that everything I think is wrong, and uh, I'm probably going to get demonetized by YouTube anyway. Hey, I hope you liked this video. hope you got something out of it. If you did, watch this video next. If you got value out of the video and you want to support the channel, check out my Patreon. Link is down below. There's also a super thanks button down below that you can use for a one-time contribution. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.